DCI Meadows. And you must be DS Haslett. Sir. This is DC Rawton. And I take it you're Mr. Ballantyne. He's all yours. Thank you. Right. I'll head off back to Weymouth then. Oh, there's not another train for hours. I'll wait over there if it's all the same for you. Sir. Welcome to London, Mr. Ballantyne. Let's go, shall we? Right, here you are. After you. Well, we'll get the electricity turned on in the morning. Can't work miracles on the front end. There's a torch in the car, I think. Well, it's a bit sparse, but I think you've got everything you need. I suppose it'll do. You're lucky to get anything. You're going to have to register within the next 14 days at the station. This is the address. Why Sun Hill? It's just a name on a map. Well, lose this and it comes out my wages. Right. Don't worry. Right, anything else you need? No. Well, what do you expect? He's not exactly on anybody's Christmas card list, is he? You planning on telling them who their new neighbour is? No, it's better that we're the only ones that know. You're taking a bit of a risk, aren't you, Gov? Well, the only people that know is here are three people from the council, two from social services and us. And we're not going to be telling anybody else, are we? Raymond John Ballantyne, age 54, various convictions for indecent exposure and assault. He was convicted in 1990 on two counts of abduction and indecent assault against juveniles and sent down for a total of 14 years. Valentine arrived in Sun Hill late last night from Dorset. Oh, great. We Those go. crimes were committed in Norfolk, weren't they? What's your point, Tony? So why is he here all of a sudden? Well, he can hardly go back to Norfolk, can he, Tony? He's a free man. He can go where he likes. I shouldn't think he'll want to stay here long anyway. Mr Meadows has decided not to alert the public to Ballantyne's presence in the area. What? Oh, all right, all right. Now, the media don't even know he's left Weymouth yet, but when they do, they're going to want to know where he is. And I don't want them finding out from anyone in this room, all right? Have a sleep again, Dan. Send you later. Ballantyne will be living in Harlow Street. Have a look at his picture and keep an eye on him, but don't draw attention to him. If he's seen acting suspiciously, report it immediately. Otherwise, it's as if he doesn't exist. The papers described him as the most evil man in Britain. So he tried to keep himself to himself when he was inside. Didn't stop people getting to him, though. And as a result, he now walks with a stick. How long has he been out? He was released eight weeks ago. He's been wandering around the south of England, trying to settle down. Then why is he washed up here? Well, he chose us. I reckon he fancies his chances in the big city. Well, couldn't Weymouth have given us more warning? Well, they've done the best that they could. I mean, technically, he's a free man. The council arranged for the house in Harlow Street. Nothing else we could do. Apart from decide whether to tell the locals. Well, under the circumstances, we decided not to. And you should have consulted me first, Jack. Well, the risk assessment group only had a couple of hours, sir. We looked at all the psychiatric reports and we classed him as medium risk. And you think it's all right to expose the citizens of Sun Hill to medium risk, do you? Sounds like a radiation leak. Well, Ballantyne claims it is a change man. He says it is no intention of reoffending. Now, I know, sir, that sounds like the fox promising not to raid the chickens, but at some point, somebody's got to try a different approach. There's been a disturbance in every town that this guy stayed in because word got out. Now, if that happens here, then Ballantyne could vanish. He could go underground, in which case we're left with an even bigger problem. And what happens if the press do find out? Have you thought of that? Then we're back to square one. You couldn't refuse, could you? I didn't know, did I? I was doing Meadows a favour, that's all. 
I had no idea I'd be ferrying a child molester around. I'm not exactly thrilled about it myself. Well, what's he like, then? Well, I didn't take him down a pub, Tone. Uh, there's just one thing I want to know, Dave. What, George? Did he offer you a sweetie? <laughs> You're <laughs> sick. Yes, sir, can I help? I'd like to see DCI Meadows, please. Uh, yes, sir, can I ask you what's in connection with? Could you please just tell him I'm here to see him? Uh, yeah, but you see, uh, Mr. Meadows is a very senior officer. You're going to have to give me a name, at least. Ray Ballantyne. All right, Mr. Ballantyne. Would you like to take a seat? Right, if you just say... I know. Thank you. Thanks. Give us a minute, will you, Liz? Mr. Ballant. Whatever you've got to say, I've heard it. Thank you. I'm trying to help you here. All right, go on. You came here for a fresh start. Well, you've got one. But if it's going to work, it's down to you as well as me. I'm aware of that. Right. Well, you won't mind hearing the ground rules, then. Firstly, if you leave this area, even for a few hours, you let me know in advance. I can't guarantee your safety off my patch. But you can on it. Secondly, you stay away from playgrounds, amusement arcades and parks. If you're seen near them, the deal's off. Do we have an understanding? We do. See you later. Sir, so I think there's something you should see. Yeah, if you mean a paper, I've already seen it. News travels fast, doesn't it? Well, I didn't breathe the word, sir. I hadn't asked, Dave. Well, no, of course not. It's just that I thought... He'll could... try not to. I want you to both get down to Harlow Street and keep your eye on the house. Sir, should we clear that with Mr Munro? I'll clear it. You want help with my school? Yeah, thanks, Liz. I need you to find somewhere else to put Mr Ballantyne. What, already? Yes, already. He's not under any supervision order, so you can try bail hostels, halfway houses, anywhere that's prepared to take a man with his reputation but preferably someone as far away from Sunhill as possible. Yes, Gov. Which one is it? Let's see if you can guess. Oh. I can't believe this. Excuse me, please. Yeah. Uh, Sean Webster. Fancy seeing you here. Do you live round here? I do, is it, Adams officer? Just round the corner. Did you see who did that? No, nah. <laughs> but I'd like to shake his hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not very helpful, is it? It's fresh. Maybe not, but it's true. Did you spray the door? I've already told you I didn't. Well, what are you doing here, then, Sean? I might not have any A-levels, officer, but I can read, all right? All right, look, listen, I can understand how you all feel, but hanging around here is not going to help. So if you could just move on, that would make life a lot easier. No. This is our neighbourhood, see? And if anyone's moving, it's going to be him. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, how I feel. This was in the garden. Little bugs, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should play this carefully. Don't want to fan the flames, do we? Yeah, all right. But it's obviously Webster. He's just rubbing our noses in it. No, I'll have a word with Sergeant Cry. Turn your radio off for yeah, a second. Right. Sure. Okay, if you could just all move back, you're obstructing the pavement. Let these people through, yeah? It's okay. We're not going past. Afternoon, Mrs. Kennedy. Come to see community policing in action, have you? <laughs> <laughs> you're a resident as well, are you? Yeah, Karen Kennedy. I live across the road, number thirty-two. This is Jason, my youngest. Jason doesn't like living opposite a child rapist. Yeah. 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 Look, all right, look, I can assure you there's no danger to the public. Don't yes. insult me! <laughs> I know what he does to kids. What sort of danger do you want? Yeah. Everything yeah. all right, yeah. Dave? What did Sergeant Cryer say? He's sending some backup. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe this. You give that beast a house in this street and then turn on us for objecting. All right, if you could just calm down, Mr. No, Kennedy. I am I... calm, officer. You should see me when I am angry. Yeah, get something done That's about right. it. Yeah. 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 Sort yeah. the squeeze around. Yeah. Get rid of him. Sergeant Crowley wants us to have a word with him. Who? Oh. Valentine. You know, make sure he keeps his head down. Fine, you go ahead. I'll handle the neighbourhood watch. Yeah, well, the thing is that, um... Well, the thing is what, George? Well, you've met him already, haven't you? Well, hang on. Hang on. I drove the car, that's all. Right. So better the devil you know, eh? Okay. Call yourself a policeman, George. This so is no ridiculous. Police. It doesn't stop ringing. Yes, well, I keep answering it and saying what? No, we understand sorry, your concern. No-one believes it anyway. If you don't like it, Vicky, I can always have you relieved from the shift. 
Sorry, Sarge. It's just... Can I have a word, June? Sir. Well, answer it, then. Sunhill yes, Police. Sarge. Sunhill Police. Right, June, the situation's changed. Oh, you're telling me, sir. The whole of Sunhill's called in to complain about Valentine. So what's happening at the house? Well, some of the locals are rattling sabres, so I've sent Tony and Eddie over as backup, sir. Right, tell them we're coming over and we may have to evacuate, Andrew. I'll put the TSG on standby, sir. So what about Valentine? Are any of them with him? Well, as I understand it, Dave Quinnan's talking to him as we speak, sir. Mr. Valentine, open the door! It's the police! Mr. Valentine! Well, open the door! Take your hand off, please, and step back, please. Mr. I've asked Valentine. you twice already, OK? Move away. Let us have a go. We'll get it open for you. Yeah. 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 Right. Oi, oi, here's the cavalry. There's <laughs> one there, mate. George. Time. What's up? Well, what do you think? Well, it's hardly surprising, is it? I mean, whose great idea was it to stick him in there? Yeah, why don't you do us all a favour and just let us go? Right. 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 Well, so whose problem is it? I'm not sure method of dealing with this type involves a pair of secateurs and a certain tender part. Can we save the debate for later, yeah? Right, you lot. Come on, I said back right. off the pavement. Tony? Gentlemen, you heard the request. We just move off the pavement, please, across the other side. I've told your colleague we're going nowhere. Well, would you mind going nowhere just over there? It's the news! I thought it was them, trying to get me to open the door. Well, I made it quite clear who it was. I saw you standing there. Yes. Yes. Let's get out of the hall, shall we? Well, I think it's best if we stay indoors. Where else am I supposed to go? You didn't happen to see who sprayed the door, did you? They've sprayed the door? Yeah. What did they put this time? Don't worry. I've heard it all before. Child rapist? Yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. Mozart, is it? Mahler. Like classical music, do you? No, not really, no. Are you staying? Yeah, yeah, for the time being. I'm afraid I can't offer you any tea, unless you happen to bring a flask. Sunhill Police. Thank you so much for your call, sir. No, there is no risk to the public, madam. Sunhill Police? Yeah, and, uh, yes, madam. What you're saying. Yeah. How long course. has he been missing? Thank you for the call, madam. And how old is he? He's ten. Right, I need to take some details. Sarge. Mr. O'Donnell. It's uh, Martin. Please come in. It's our son Andy. He's uh, late home from school. Maggie's a bit worried. Maggie's your wife, is she? Yeah, yeah. She she's through here. Hello, Mrs. O'Donnell. PC Page and PC McCann. We're here about your son Andy, right? He should have come straight home from school. Have you called the school? Yeah, he left on time and I've tried his friend Mark. He hasn't seen him either. Why is that man here? Excuse me? She means him, in the paper. Oh, I do understand your concern, Mrs O'Donnell. If I'd have known there was someone like that living round here, do you think I would have let Andy come home from school on his own? Do you? Thank you, love. Please, you're only trying to help. Look, I do appreciate how upset you must be. Mr O'Donnell, can we have a word outside? Yeah, of course. Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. She's, a She's bit... understandably upset. Yeah. Look, we're going to need to get a description of Andy. Oh, right. Um, well, he's, uh, he's about this tall. Right. Uh, he's ten. He's got a uh, massy coloured hair, brown. Um, he's carrying a small rucksack and he's got his school uniform on. Which school? Plover Way. Uh, his teacher's called Miss Dunbar, Alison Dunbar. Right. Well, we better go over there right now. All right. I'll get my coat. Uh, 
Uh, well, actually, Mr. O'Donnell, we think it's probably best if you stay here with your wife. You never know, Andy might return here at any time. Are you sure? I mean, it's no problem. Oh, we're quite sure. Thanks. Is he coming out again or what? I doubt it. Well, if he does, be sure to give us a shout, will you? We'll be down the crown. <laughs> we'll be sure. Not to bother. Mrs. Kennedy, why don't you go home too? We're staying yeah, right yeah. here. Yep. They might not be serious, but we are. Everything under control, George? Yes, sir. Now this lot are off the scene. thought there was only one Alan molester. Oh, it's a pity you couldn't have parked a bit closer. Well, we have got a here. difficult situation developing here, and it Appreciate really doesn't that. help to have a television crew this near. You must be Meadows. I'm DCI Jack Meadows, yes, and you are? My name's Karen Kennedy. I've lived in this street with my family for four years. Well, we know it's not perfect, but it's our home, and we don't want people like that as neighbours, thank you. Yeah, well, he has to live somewhere, Mrs Kennedy. Oh, we're not here. We don't dump our rubbish where you live, do we? Look, whatever the rights and wrongs are, Mr Valentine is a free man. There's nothing I can do about that. What about my kids? As long as he's in that house, we're living in fear. What, what kind of freedom's that? Look, I, I know it's not perfect, Mrs Kennedy, but do you have a better solution? Do as it happens. You lock him up and you throw away that key. Yeah, well, thank you for your thoughts, Mrs Kennedy. Have a word, sir. If you don't want to hear what I've got to say, then don't ask me. But it's either him or us living in the street, and it's... We're not moving! It's your problem, not mine. I just heard from Polly and Gary, sir. They've had a call about a missing child. And when the parents heard about the Valentine story, they think he's responsible. Based on what? Well, so far, nothing, sir, but the child is missing. So how long has he been missing? Well, since school finished, which is, what, an hour and a half ago. This is not what I want to hear, Bob. He's probably up to no good with Mark Lowe. Have you checked with him? Andy's father talked to him. He hasn't seen him. Why'd you say he'd be up to no good? Andy O'Donnell's a bit of a troublemaker, to be honest. I don't want to speak out of turn, but, um, he's not my star pupil. Something happened recently. He hit one of his classmates, and I'm afraid I had to reprimand him quite strongly in front of the class. Right. And did this have any effect on him? Well, it looks like it, doesn't it? Always like this, is it? But I'm not here to, to judge what you did, Mr Ballantyne. Of course not. They all tell me that. Well, in the eyes of the law, you... you... Well... Don't tell me about the eyes of the law. I've been there when they've looked the other way. And I'll bet you have too. 340 from 218. Excuse me. You planning on leaving me in here or what? Calm down, Dave. Dixie on Meadows is coming in. He's on his way around the back. Oh, hang on. Company's coming. Hey, what the hell's going on? Get down from there. Get... Absolutely no comment. Do you understand English? Come to this gate, you trespassing. You could have told me that lot were here, Dave. Yeah, sorry, sir. Afternoon, Mr. Valentine. Welcome to my world. Go upstairs, will you, Dave? Keep your eye on the front. Sir? Seems like a decent lad. Oh, you'd know, would you? They're rarer than you think. So, having a street party in your honour. Who told them I was here? The gentlemen of the press, the Weymouth variety. They're only doing their job. You realise you won't be able to stay here, don't you? Got any suggestions? DC Rotten's looking into it. I can savour the bother. You got somewhere in mind? There isn't anywhere, Mr Meadows. As they say, you can run, but you can't hide. So you don't have any family to go back to? I was married once, believe it or not. I don't know where she is now. You think she'd want to see me again? I've had enough years to get used to what people think about me, Mr Meadows. I'm pond life the lowest form of existence. They want to kill me because they hate me. And they hate me because they're afraid of me. You see, 
I don't think they can help it. It's in their genes, isn't it, to destroy what threatens their children. Well, thanks for the morality lesson. But it's solutions I need, not problems. And you'll have to take sides. Who are you defending, me or them? You can't have it both ways. Take their side, and you're throwing me to the wolves. But defend me, and you're telling those people that a child rapist is more important than their children. I'm aware of the irony, thank you. And he doesn't help. I'm not trying to help. It's not my problem, is it? It's yours. Mark! Please. Tea? Coffee? Well, that would be nice, thanks. Careful. Mark! <laughs> this is uh, Officer Page and Officer McCoy from Sun Hill. Hello, Mark. Hi, it's McCann. Hi. Mark, we just wanted to talk to you about Andy O'Donnell. He hasn't been home and his mum's a bit worried. Yes, yes, she rang, didn't she, Mark? So when did you last see him? After school, he went off home. Did he seem any different from normal? No. no I bet he was a bit annoyed Miss Dunbar ticking him off there, wasn't he? Yeah, he was right pissed off. Mark! Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Eyes left, you got company. Oh, terrific. I'll tell the DCI. Yeah, received. No, they're out the back as well, so it's going to be easier if we go to the front. Yeah. Sir. Give Dave Quinn a signal when you're ready, OK? I take it that's your graffiti artist out yes, there. Yes, sir, and his mates, sir. Right, get Mr Ballantyne ready. Right. We'll be moving as soon as the TSG arrives. Right, come on, we're out of here. Let's go, come on. Oh, before I forget. Thanks. No, leave that. We'll come back for it later. Come on, move it. We're moving out, so keep things calm and no arrests unless you have to. Got that? Yes, sir. 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 Well, we're getting constable. I take it the crown was open then, Mr Webster. Oh, there's a law against having a beer now, is there? Hey, look, Mr Webster, you've made your feelings clear and you're getting what you want, so let's keep this peaceful, shall we? Of course, officer. Right, thanks. Send him out! Send him out! Oh. Send him out! Send him out! Send him out! Send him out! Did you say something about tea or coffee? Oh, I'm so sorry. White or... or... Black. It was fine. Two sugars. Back of your hand. Thank you. She's so embarrassing. Mm, it's OK. She means well. Besides, have you met my mother? Mm -hmm. Mark, are you sure there isn't something you haven't been telling us? About Andy? That's okay. You won't get into trouble, nor will he. He made me promise not to say anything. Well, he might be in danger, and if he is, he'd want you to tell us. I mean, wouldn't you, if it was you? Quicker in a mini can. Go, go, go! Right, let's give them some pictures, shall we? Go, come on! Go! I'm sorry. Was it something to do with Andy getting told off? He said he's had enough of everything. Everyone hates him at school, except me. Miss Dunbar never listens to him. She just says that he's a troublemaker and stuff. So I said he's going to run away. He meant it. He told me not to tell anyone. Did he tell you where he was going? He didn't know, I swear. When was this? Right off school. Did you see which way he went? 
Mark, it's important. What happened to him? He went off, and this man started talking to him. Mark, what's up? It's all right, Mrs Lowe. Let's just give him a minute. Go on, Mark. Tell me about this man. He was an old man. He had white hair and he walked funny. Walked funny? How do you mean? You know, he had a stick. Right in an omelette factory. Glad you find it so funny, Sarge. Have your name, please. Valentine. Well, sorry about this, Matthew. It's all right, sir. You're lucky it's quiet. The female cells are free. Address? No fixed abode. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sir. Yeah, go ahead, Polly. Sarge, we've just been with Andy O'Donnell's schoolmate. He saw him going off after school with a man who matches the description of Valentine. Valentine? Oh. How good was the description? Right, I'll inform Sergeant Cry. In the meantime, you better start looking for him. Receive, Sarge. Looking? Yeah, you know, Gary, looking like you do with needles and haystacks. You'll be kept here until further arrangements are made. You can leave the cell at any time, but you have to be accompanied by a police officer. Availability cannot be guaranteed. This door will be left open, but the door to the passage will be closed and locked. Any questions? No. If you want to leave Stone Hill, I'll need two hours' notice minimum. If you do leave, it's at your own risk. Now, PC Quinny could have been injured out there, and I don't want to take any more chances. I can't help the way those people behaved. No. It's in their genes, isn't it? Oh, I don't know, Reg. Maybe they're carol singers. You could have given them a lift, couldn't you? No, no, George. Strictly impartial, remember? Yeah, it'd be different if we were off duty, though. I mean, where's it say we have to provide bed and board for scum like that? Can't see anyone bringing him his tea, that's for sure. Oh, I don't know. I'm sure he could ask Dave. Dave? Why? Why? Because I think Dave's lost his edge, that's why. He's alone. He's only doing his job. That's not what he looked like to me. Well, what did you see? Well, let's just put it this way. I think I saw Dave going beyond the call of duty. I'll take that, shall I? Oh, yeah, be my guest. <laughs> when is this supposed to have happened? We've known where Ballantyne's been all day. Well, what about after he registered, sir? He would have passed near Pluverway School between here and his home. What time was that? Well, it left here just after 3. School turns out at 3.15. So that gives him one and a quarter hours before Dave Quinnan and George Garfield got to the house. Tell me this isn't happening. Well, let's hope it isn't, sir. Right. Let's get him to an interview room. Sir. Uh, uh, Bob, uh, I'd like Dave Quinnan to sit in, because it seems that Ballantyne's got some sort of respect for him. Of course, sir. You should have some crispy bacon to go with him, Dave. Hilarious as ever, George. <laughs> yeah, well... I think someone's still got a sense of humour around here, eh? The Lone Ranger left his walking stick. What do you want me to do with that? Oh, I thought you could drop it off, you know. To your mate. He's not my mate, George. Oh, really? Look, George, don't be such a... Can I have a word, please? Now. Thanks for doing this, Dave. Uh, sir, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go on. What exactly did Ballantyne do his time for? Well, 
Try this. He watched a little boy leaving his friend's house. He followed him, made out he was lost, asked for help finding the right street. So the little boy got into the car. He was found nine hours later in a lay-by 80 miles away. He's naked, two broken ribs. So traumatised, he couldn't speak for a week. When he did, it took three months to get him to talk about what Ballantyne had done. You see, he told the boy that if he said anything, he'd come back and kill him. And for three months, the kid thought that was going to happen. You can't blame him. He was only seven. Let's go and talk to him, shall we? I walked home to Harlow Street. I walked to Harlow Street. Did he go straight there? Yes. Why? A boy's missing. Ten-year-old boy. Didn't come home from school. You passed the school, walking from here to Harlow Street. Good grief. Just tell you me... You think? I don't think anything. I'm just asking. No, no, no. You didn't just ask me. No one just asks me anything. Everything someone says to me has some other meaning. I'm not stupid, Mr. Meadows. I know what you're thinking. I don't have to say anything. Well, your silence could I be... I know my rights, thank you. I'm not under arrest, am I? I'm here voluntarily. At this moment, you can leave the station at any time you want. Just don't ask for an escort. Did they follow me here? Some of them. Don't you people ever give up? They're frightened. You know that. Yeah. Look at me. Terrifying, aren't I? They hate you because they're afraid of you, remember? You ought to know that we have a witness who saw you with the boy. You were seen talking to the boy, Mr. Ballantyne. What happened? Nothing happened. But you were with him? Yes, for a while. And? We talked, that's all. Where did you meet him? I don't know. Somewhere on the high street. He seemed upset about something. I asked him what the matter was. Don't ask me why, I just... did. There'd been some trouble at school. We went to a cafe. I bought him a burger. We talked about school, about how people can be cruel. He told me he was sick of everyone making him do things all the time. Well, I knew how he felt. He wasn't a very happy kid. What did you do with him after that? For oh, heaven's sake, nothing. Well, you can't blame me for being sceptical, Ray. Look, there's something wrong with that boy. He's scared. I could see it in his eyes. Believe me, I've seen that look before. So what do you want? A medal? I'm not trying to be a hero. I could have asked him about it, but I didn't. I just wanted to run away from it. We left the cafe, and he got on a bus, number 25. I have no idea where he was going. That is the truth. But I don't suppose you believe it, do you? Interview terminated at 17.57. What kind of a photo? Well, any photo will do. A school photo would be ideal. I'll just go get one. What's Maggie up to? She's just gone to get a photograph of Andy. How about this one? Yeah. Last year's. Um, Excuse me a minute. Right, let's take this with me. Sierra Oscar from 358. Polly's busy right now. Vicky, can I help? Message from Sergeant Cryer. Andy O'Donnell was seen approximately 
5 p.m. in the High Street, boarding a number 25 bus. Receive, Vicky. Can I have an idea on that witness? Are you alone? Uh, yeah, I'm free to talk. It's Ray Ballantyne. Receive, Vicky. Thanks. Well, that'll look good on the news. Sir? Candles. They're holding a candlelit vigil. I'll say she's not media savvy. So I can't blame her. She wants him out and I want him out. You got any suggestions, sir? I don't care what you do, Jack. Just get this sorted. It'll cost us thousands keeping him here. I'll have to justify that to area, the media and that lot out there. And we're not running a hostel here. I want him moved by tomorrow morning. I don't care if it's Barn Street or Barrow and Village. Just get him out. Sir? For 25, that goes up west. Well, they've got on board security cameras. It might be worth checking the footage. All right, we're going there. Right. Do you reckon that might mean something to Mark Lowe? What, the bus road? Well, it's worth a try. Well, that's good enough for me. Here are, Dave. What are you planning to do with this lot? I suppose I'd better give it to him. Apparently, he knows my face. Make his day. Thank you. Thought you were asleep. I was. Where I've been these past few years, it pays to be a light sleeper. Right, well. Have they found that boy yet? No. No, not that I've heard. Poor kid. Look, you won't get into any trouble, will you, Mrs. Lowe? No. No, of course not. Not if it helps Andy. Exactly. We do go on the 25 sometimes. It takes us up by the old railway yard. Is that the yard at Three Acre Lane? Yeah, Andy found it. We plan the railway carriages there. Well done, Mark. Andy will thank you. Have you tried the bell hostel in Whitechapel? Yeah, about four hours ago. It's already there, sir. No. And that best Anglo Saxon. This is insane. There must be somewhere for people like him. Yeah, but people like him don't officially exist, do they? They go through the system and then they spat out at the other end for you and me and the residents of Harlow Street to worry about. Yeah, but that doesn't help me, does it? No, oh, God. No, I'm sorry, Liz. Look, I know you've tried everywhere, but uh, just try again, will you? Yeah. Leave it to me. Mr. Meadows, I'd like to have a word with you. Would he indeed? Well, we're ready for him. Send him out. And uh, Mrs. Kennedy, on your own, inside. All right. I'll just see what he has to say, OK? And I'll come back and tell you, OK? Thank you. No, this is a private conversation, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Sir. Something you want to tell me? We're not on your street anymore, Mrs. Kennedy. We're on mine. So do you mind telling me what's going on? You already know that. You've got what you want, haven't you? We both know that Ballantyne can't stay in there forever. So where's it going to go to next? I'm afraid I don't know. Which is exactly why we're here. We're trying to sort out some proper accommodation for him. Somewhere appropriate. What does that mean, appropriate? Appropriate for who? For, for my kids or for the poor kids in whichever street you dump them in next? And what about your kids? What do you tell them? That there's some nasty man after them? They have to know the truth. Yeah, well, you tell them from me that whoever's after them is not the man I've got safely locked up in one of my cells. Excuse me. I hope they have sweet dreams. I hope you do too, Mr Meadows. Anything? Not yet. They could be anywhere. We might as well start these carriages over here. All aboard. Right, we're going to start over here, right? right. Take a look up here. Yeah, I'll get this one. Turn. Down there.
And it's Donald. 469595. Yes, there. Think we found it. On way. Over here. He's in there. Yeah? All right, well, I'll take this side. He's in here. There's a hole in the door. I'm going to try and get through. It's all right, Andy. I'm PC Page, but you can call me Polly. This is a really good camp you've got in here. Bit small, though. <laughs> Should we go outside? There's more room out there. Are you hurt? No. Look, Andy, you're not in any trouble. We're just really glad to see you. You're battling me. Sorry. That better? Well, I'm not in trouble. How come they called the police? Well, just to help find you. Your mum and dad are really worried about you. Andy, you all right? I don't want to see them. Well, they're not cross. They'd be really happy to see you again. I'm never going back there. Look, Andy, I'll tell you what. Me and you will make a deal. You come outside and we'll go back to Sun Hill. You can tell me all about it. I promise you don't have to see anyone you don't want to. Andy, mind your head. That's it. Out you get. Gary, this is Andy. Gary's going to take you back to the car, OK? Oh, come on, Andy. Come on. Here you go. Right, son. Uh... Perhaps you can show me the way out of there, cos I don't know. Mm. It's that way. Give us a hand, Tom. Oh, thanks. See you back at the car. You're right. Sierra Oscar from 469. Go ahead, Polly. Yeah, we found Andy O'Donnell. I'll tell his parents straight away. No, don't do that, Vicky. There seems to be some sort of problem between Andy and his parents. Can you stall them? I want to have a proper talk to him first. All received. I thought you'd like to know that they found the kid. Is he all right? They're finding that out now. So, it looks like you're off the hook. Ever been on a hook, Mr Meadows? One or two. They're not that easy to get off, are they? I'm afraid you're going to have to move on. But I'll do what I can to help. You've done that already. I'd like a bit of time to get my things together. There you go. Right then, Andy. I'm going to ask you a few questions. This is Frank, if you've been listening. Well, why isn't there somewhere for people like him to go? Well, there is, Vicky. It's called prison. No, no, but when he's served his time, where's he supposed to go then? I don't know. Why don't you ask Dr Doolittle? Dr Doolittle? Yeah. He talks to the animals. Save it, George. I've had enough today. No, no, it's a serious question, though. We want to know why this bloke Ballantyne is causing so much fuss. You know perfectly well why. Yeah, but you've spoken to him, haven't you, eh? So, come on. What's it like? You really want to know, yeah? Yeah. He's just a sad, lonely old bloke, George. <laughs> yeah, my heart bleeds. It's easy for you to hate him if you haven't got to look him in the face. Well, I don't know. I haven't looked at it as much as you have, have I? Yeah, and we all know why that is, don't we? Why? Because you bottled out, that's why, George. You do what? You know what I'm talking about. He knows your face, Dave. What's the matter, George? You can't handle it. Afraid the bogeyman might get you, or you're just worried you might do something unprofessional. Like treating a child rapist like some sort of sick relative. Look, it might not look like it to you, George, but under very difficult circumstances, I'm just trying to do my job. Yeah, that's right, Dave. Just obey an order. Listen, calm George. down. Dave's free to make friends with who he wants. I haven't made friends with anybody. No, but you're going the right way about losing some. Well, what's got his goat? 
doesn't like the friends Dave's been keeping. Tony, if you can't say anything helpful, don't say anything at all, OK? There's the kid. Well, he's terrified. He says his father's been abusing him for the past six months. They're getting the child protection team involved. Poor kid. Yeah, the parents don't know yet. We've got to interview him. See you later. It's a legitimate case. OK, thanks for nothing. So, what's happening? Well, they had a room until I gave them the offender's name. Fancy that. Any others? No, that was the last one on the last list. Right, get me the train timetables, Liz. Set. Any news? Yeah, we found Andy. He's fine. Oh, thank heaven. Oh, where is he? He's back at the station. We'd like you to come with us, Mr O'Donnell. Yeah, great. We'll get a coat. No, just you, please. Martin, what's going on? What's he been telling you? Not one of his silly little stories. Save it, Mr O'Donnell. Yep. Come on. I said, what's going on, Martin? Martin! What's going on? Welcome to the Sun Hill Hotel, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, Matthew, but he won't be troubling you for much longer. Hang on a sec, Paul. Sarge. Cheers. Right. Matthew! We need an ambulance now, Polly. What's going on? You, sit down over here. Ambulance required, custody suite. What's happened, sir? It's Ballantyne, he's hung himself. Hi, Jack. Have you heard from the CIB yet, sir? Oh, uh, nothing official. But off the record, I'd say it's unlikely there's going to be any sort of comeback. I want to know how it happened, though. Well, when you've been where Ballantyne was for all those years, I suppose you learned the tricks of the trade, including how to kill yourself. Perhaps you should have watched him more closely. Well, now is not the place to discuss it. The media saw the ambulance leaving. I want to know what happened. I'm just off to make a statement. It's all right, Jack. I'll handle this. I don't get himself. No, you're not. No, you're right. I'm not. But you are, though, aren't you? Yeah, if I'm honest, George, yeah, I suppose I am. And before you say anything, I never made friends with nobody. You know how I feel about his sort. But... Well, should anybody be driven to that? I don't know. No, I suppose not. But look, look. You fancy a pint? Maybe tomorrow. Dave, you all right? Yes, sir. Yeah. You? Yeah. Thanks for your help today. No problem. Tomorrow, then. Sir? Take it. Like the true professionals they are, Jack. Good night. Good night, sir. Are you happy now? Mr Meadows, don't blame us. We were just protecting our kids. 